If you are after any Ultimate Team coins, make sure you check out ut1buy.com and use the discount code JAREDHD to get 6% off your order. Cheapest place on the internet. G'day guys, how's it going? It is Jared HD here, welcome to episode number 6 of Jared's Journey, my Ultimate Team Road to Glory series. We're going to kick off today's episode using the coins that we did pick up from last episode's pack opening with my mum. If you haven't already seen that video, make sure you check it out. It is absolutely hilarious in my opinion, but we have decided to buy Leroy Fur. Marcos Rojo and Lauren Koscielny to add to our BPL side. We also did bring in Santi Cazorla and Cabela and uh, Chesney, who we did pick up in the pack opening. Uh, going to give Ornodovic a bit of a break. Even though he's one of our best players, I think uh, we need to give Santi Cazorla a bit of a run. But our first opponent for this game is... Uh, Rain Man, I think his count was. He has an absolutely insane sweaty team. That is just looking so overpowered. But it is us that gets the first attack. Jack Wilshere, unlucky not to score a goal there two minutes into the matchup. And then this guy here with a free kick. It goes to Daniel De Rossi to the overpowered Dumbia, who gets past my piss poor defending, slotting it past Chesney. And unfortunately, giving my opponent a 1-0 advantage. Dumbia is such an overpowered player on this year's FIFA. Well, he basically is every year. 33 minutes into it, though. Kolarov is unlucky not to get that ball into the back of the net after the free kick. Almost sneaks past the keeper. But then off the resulting throw-in, it is going to be Leroy Fur uh, trying to get to Cabela. Leroy Fur tackles the defender. He's going to get inside the box himself. Takes the strike, and that is a great goal from the new signing. Leroy Fur getting a goal on debut to make it a one or line. A very well-worked individual goal there from the Dutch midfielder. 42 minutes into it, though. I right, Barbo. He's one-on-one -on -one with Chesney. Once again, Chesney cannot tackle or get the ball back. And we go down two goals to one. Chesney did not impress me at all this matchup, as you will see later on in the, in the matchup. But Leroy Fur here to Remy Cabela on debut. Getting it past Krishko. He's going to take the strike. He hits the post. A terrible touch from Kazola. And unfortunately, we cannot get the lead back. or We cannot tie things up. A terrible, terrible mistake from Santa Cazorla. Really, an 84 rated player should be doing a lot better than that with their first touch. Off the resulting goal kick though, it's going to go all the way straight up to Ibarbo. How the hell did he get past Lauren Kinshelny? You tell me. I had nothing else I could do. It was my only choice. Had to try making a miraculous slide tackle with Koscielny and he gets a red card. He had to try making up for his previous mistake. But unfortunately, it all goes pear-shaped. And a game that I thought we were deserving of winning, potentially, we now have to try saving and at least trying to get a draw. Dumbia goes left. Chesney goes left. But this game, man, this game is AIDS sometimes. It's so easy to score off penalties, but it's impossible to save them. Oh, God, this guy is up 3-1. And honestly, I can handle defeat. Like, that last game when we lost 10-2, I can handle that. But... Um, we did not deserve to lose this game as we do pull back a late goal there. It doesn't matter as we go down three goals to two against this guy. Not happy at all with that. Thought we could have won this matchup. We were the better side. Unfortunately though, Chesney had a shocker and defensively I had a shocker. We pick up 608 coins from that matchup and we have still not made a win. We're still not registered a point in Division 9, which is shocking to see. We pick up a new defender in Onua and a new goalkeeper in David De Gea to replace Chesney and to replace Laurent Koscielny. Hopefully, these fellas can get the job done. I also did decide to bring in Marco Onordovic and give Santi Cazorla the bench. He did not impress me at all. Our next opponent, though, is going to be deal with it. 
He has an 81 rated 5 star team. It is a Premier League side, a mix of rare and non-rare plays, but uh, it is a fairly cheap BPL side. Hopefully it, we can get the job done over this guy. Sorry about that bloody Twitter, but uh, five, six minutes into it, sorry, Vargas isn't the ball. Getting past that terrible defending there from my opponent. He takes it past Koscielny and finesses it past Brad Friedel. And Vargas, I believe that was, gives us a 1-0 advantage, 7 minutes into it. That is a fantastic goal. Pushing on here, 27 minutes into it, Vargas to Remy Cabela. Cabela absolutely annihilates that defender, outpacing Fazio. He decides to take the strike, and that is a fantastic goal there from Remy Cabela, giving us a 2 Nil advantage, 28 minutes into it. As we move on here, just before halftime, 10 minutes till halftime, Vargas, he sees a beautiful run there from Marco Ornodovic back from his benching, who lays it off to Cabela for the sweaty goal. He can't take any chances in Ultimate Team this year, and we extend our lead to a 3 nil advantage. This guy decided that enough is enough, and as you will see here, he decides to rage quit. Vargas and De Gea getting a perfect 10, and we pick up just under 500 coins for our victory. Our first three points in Division 9, and let's see if we can push on and get some more results. I did decide to build this team, bought a few of the players, already had a few of them in the club. This is a very, very overpowered uh, Serie A and BPL and just um, Belgium. It's just a crazy little hybrid, and hopefully it can get the job done. It should get the job done here as we come up a guy against a guy with 42 chemistry. Uh, in Division 9, I don't know how he made it if he's only got 42 chemistry, but four minutes into it, Callihan gets tackled. It goes to Rodrigo, Rodrigo to Dea Mertens, and then Callihan does put it past the keeper. And the Spanish midfielder, who is our striker in this team from Napoli, does give us a 1-0 advantage. Very, very pleased to see that. Nothing else really happened until the stroke of halftime where Callihan was trying to chase the ball down once again. He's going to cut back in. Takes it past the defender. He does cut past another one. A little bit of a step over. A rule left. And he is taken down in the box. Absolutely brilliant effort from Callihan as the referee does award a penalty and awards a yellow card to the QPR defender, Stephen Corker. Our goalkeeper, Handanovic, does step up, but of course, I'm going to be changing it to Rodrigo, who is going to take the penalty here. Two and a half bars of power to the right-hand side, and that is a fantastic penalty goal from Rodrigo. This team is really, really clicking, which is fantastic to see. 54 minutes into it, though, Casares 2-9 goal, and the Belgian midfielder from AS Roma is on the ball, finding plenty of space, seeing a good run there, lays it over the top to Mertens. Mertens gets it past the keeper, and Mertens gives us another 3-0 advantage, and once again, at 3-0, my opponent did decide that enough is enough, and he did rage quit. We pick up a solid 658 coins from that matchup, and we pick up two wins on the trot in Division 9 to set, set us quite steady. Anyway, fellas, we are going to wrap up episode number 6 of Jared's Journey, my ultimate team Road to Glory series. If you did enjoy the episode, make sure that you smash the crap out of the like button. It really helps me out. Make sure that you subscribe if you are new around here. By the way, fellas, I will have a lot of pack openings and a lot of Team of the Year content coming to the channel very, very soon. Make sure that you are following me on Twitter at JaredHD to keep up to date with the channel, though. But most importantly, fellas, it has been JaredHD here. I'm out. Peace.